Senator from Washington. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I come to the floor today to honor and commemorate the men and women who died fighting for our great country. Memorial Day is a day to honor those American heroes who made the ultimate sacrifice for our nation. It's because of their sacrifice that we can safely enjoy the freedoms our great country offers. Sorry, go ahead and proceed. Thank, thank you, Mr. President. It is because of their unmatched commitment that America can remain a beacon for democracy and freedom throughout the world. Mr. President, Memorial Day is a day of remembrance, but it's also a day of reflection. When our brave men and women volunteered to protect our nation, we promised them we would take care of them and their families when they return home. On this Memorial Day, we need to ask ourselves, are we doing enough for our nation's veterans? Making sure our veterans can find jobs when they come back home is an area where we must do more. For too long, we've been investing billions of dollars training our young men and women to protect our nation, only to ignore them when they come home. For too long, we have patted them on the back and pushed them into the job market with no support. That is simply unacceptable, and it doesn't meet the, the promise that we made to our service members. Mr. President, our hands-off approach has left us with an unemployment rate of over 27 percent among young veterans coming home from Iraq and Afghanistan. That is one in five of our nation's heroes who cannot find a job to support their family and who don't have an income to provide the stability that is so critical to their transition home. That is exactly why earlier this month I introduced the Hiring Heroes Act of 2011, which was now co-sponsored now by 17 centers and garnered bipartisan support. This legislation will rethink the way we support our men and women in uniform when they come home to look for a job. I introduced this critical legislation because I have heard firsthand from so many veterans that we have not done enough to provide them with the support they need to find work. I've heard from medics who return home from treating battlefield wounds who cannot get certification to be an EMT or drive an ambulance. I've heard from veterans who tell me they no longer write they're a veteran on their resume because they fear the stigma they believe employers attach to the invisible wounds of war. These stories are heartbreaking and they're frustrating. But more than anything, they are a reminder that we have got to act now. Mr. President, my legislation will allow our service members to capitalize on their service. For this first time, it will require broad job skills training for anyone leaving the military as part of the military's transition assistance program. Today, over a third of those leaving the Army don't get any of that training. My bill will also require the Department of Labor to take a hard look at what military skills and training should be translatable into the civilian sector and will work to make it simpler to get those licenses and certifications our veterans need. All of these are real substantial steps to put our veterans to work and all of them come at a pivotal time for our economic recovery and our veterans. Mr. President, I grew up with the Vietnam War. I've dedicated much of my Senate career helping to care for the veterans we left behind that time. The mistakes we made then cost our nation and our veterans dearly. Today, we risk repeating those mistakes. We cannot let that happen again. Our nation's veterans are disciplined. They're team players who have proven they can deliver under pressure like no one else. So, Mr. President, let's not, la not let another year and in another Memorial Day go by without us delivering for them. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the floor. Mr. President.